What's going on guys? Welcome back to day two of the Wrangler frame repair. Jeep, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the spring buckets first. And now the reason we're doing the spring buckets first is because when we do the frame, we actually have to remove the control arms and everything else. And we do it side by side so that the axle stays in place. Now we had to remove the springs and that means we had to drop this axle down and drop the shocks and everything else. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to replace the spring buckets, get the springs back in here, get the shocks back connected again. Then we can do side by side on the frame and we'll get the frame done. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these out right now. Um, like I said, I'm not going to show you guys a bunch of the work because I don't have the, the tripod and the equipment and everything else to get you up in here. But that's where we're starting first. And I'll come back in when we got this thing all uh, cut out. All right, guys. So we got a little ahead of the game, cleaned everything up and actually welded in the new spring bucket. So now one thing that I wanted to bring to your guys attention is the fact that on the back side of the frame you cannot get to the spring bucket so let me show you guys on the passenger side all right so on the passenger side you can see the factory bucket is still here we have these outer mounts that are welded it's not welded here and then up and around that's the body it welds up on the frame where the body is now the only way to get to that inside is to actually lift the body off of the car However, I found that in years of doing these, as long as we weld this seam right here, this seam, this seam, that seam, and that seam, and then also the spring bucket down here right to the frame, then this will never ever move. There is no downwards force on this, only up from the spring, so we'll never have a problem with that. And truthfully, it's not worth it to lift the entire body off of the frame just to weld this one bucket on. So we can make it strong, we can gusset it, we can do what we need to do. So now that we got the, path, the driver's side one done, we're gonna knock out the passenger one. So, <laughs> wanted to show you guys something, a couple things actually. And uh, yeah, we, uh, you just saw, oh my God. Every time I wear safety glass, I get crap in my eye. But what you guys probably didn't see is we got spring buckets in on both sides, there's that one. And there's that one, nice and brandy new. Now let's show you what was left of the old ones. So this was the passenger side one. And then this was what was left of the driver's side. So pretty gnarly. And what I'm assuming is this customer's from Jersey and they have this sticker, Island Beach State Park. So this thing has probably spent some time on the sand near the water, as well as being a Northeast vehicle. And yeah, so let's just give you an idea of what we're working with on this one. It's probably the worst one we've done so far. So you see all that stuff on the floor? We haven't even cut anything yet. We haven't started cutting the frame, nothing. This is all just stuff that fell out from taking bolts out of the thing. Luckily we got the skid plate down. We only had two bolts that spun in the frame, but take a look at this guys. That's definitely some salt water action because that's rotted all the way up, almost all the way up. So we're gonna have to treat the whole inside of that portion of the frame too, which normally we don't have to, but this one is pretty gnarly. Now here's the worst part. This is the passenger side, which is pretty bad. But remember I showed you guys that crack in the frame on the other side? Well, it goes all the way through across the top, down, around and back down. There's another crack right here that started to crack into this crack. This whole section of the frame, guys, was literally probably a couple of weeks from completely disintegrating itself from the rest of the frame. So what we did on this side was we started, we welded that crack. This is all gonna get plated, but I wanted to take care of these cracks. We welded the body mount to it, we welded up the crack on this side. We realigned this whole section of the frame so it's in the right spot now. And as you can see, all the cracks have closed themselves up. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna clean this up and we're gonna weld this crack as well, 
just to get some material in there even before we plate it so that we have the strength. And then we're gonna cut out all of uh, what looks like someone tried to weld at one point. So we're gonna go get to cutting all the stuff off the frame. We'll start with the passenger side and um, I don't know guys, this one's pretty bad. So we're gonna have to do some, some interesting treating on this thing, but we'll get it fixed. We'll definitely get it fixed. This is nothing out of the ordinary. We do still have good frame up top. We do have a little bit of rust, surface rust and some dirt, but we don't have that big of an issue. So we're gonna cut this one kind of high. We're actually gonna go probably right about there, which is a little bit more than halfway, just so that we can get the most amount of rust out of this frame as possible. So I'm gonna hit it with the needle scaler so the plasma cutter doesn't have such a hard time with it. And then we'll get this whole section of the frame cut out. All right, guys, so the passenger side is all cut out. Now, I'm going to give you the tour of what we actually cut and how we cut it. So it's pretty easy to see. Literally half of the frame is gone. So we cut around the body mounts. And you'll notice we cleaned up everything all around because we're going to weld inside there as well. Cleaned up all this frame. That's just some surface stuff. This whole section went around that body mount. We cut out all the cancer over here and we cleaned up over here. Now, as far as the inside goes, we ended up cutting up a little bit higher. Sway bar mount is out, exhaust mount is out, all that stuff's gonna get covered up. And then we go all the way down, it's all prepped, all ground down, cut some of that out. We come to that big ass crack. We're gonna do a little bit of fill work on that before we go ahead and actually plate it so that we have double the strength. And that's where we are at right now. So we're gonna weld that crack up and then we're gonna throw the safety cap up in here and then we'll weld that in. All right guys, so we got one whole side completely welded in and we gotta go move on to the other side, but I wanted to show you guys this side and that's actually gonna end this video because there's really nothing left to do except exactly what we just did. So here's what it looks like fully welded in weld all the way around there we do leave this back section open until we're completely done and then we'll we'll blast that in there and not really any specific reason why I do that but I always wait until the end to do that piece welds all the way down here all the way around and then in the front see well this is the middle weld all the way around body mount weld all the way across the top now you need a hundred percent welds on these things guys and then let's kill this light up in here, we did a bunch of weld and actually built it up. And there's a little porosity right there you can see, but we'll take care of that. And then the plates up front, we welded the crack up top up there. We got this mount tied in. We got the frame straightened out. Same thing on the inside. We welded the whole inside all the way down to the front. And then we also plated the front, tied it into the upper control arm mount, as well as the lower control arm mount. I did end up making a piece of quarter inch steel and welding that in because this mount was rotted a little bit. So we cut that back and then welded in this piece of steel. Got that done. And now all we have left to do is we're actually gonna throw a quick coat of paint. We're actually primer, self etching primer and then paint. And then we're gonna move on to that side. So you can see the difference, guys. Way better. Way, way better. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to end the video. And what I'll do now is give you guys just a quick overview of everything that we did. And hopefully that'll give you a good represent. Holy crap, I'm bright. It'll give you a good representation of what it takes to do this and the things that you need to do in order to prepare for these things and prepare for the safety cap and do the painting and everything else so again the end of this video is just going to be a talking video where i tell you what we went over so i'm going to get to painting and do the other side because it needs to get done and get out of here all right guys so to end off this video we're going to show you a little bit of it all painted up not dry yet so it still has a gloss on it but it is flat black treated the frame back here got the new spring bucket in Got the frame in, all in this area, again in this section, and then we treated the frame up front, 
pretty much all the way up to the shock tower. There's really not much we can do for the rest of it without actually sandblasting it and you know going crazy with it. But there's what a, a fully painted side looks like, and here's the inside of it. There's a control arm mounts, sway bar mounts up there, and then full frame. So big difference from what it was. And then here is just a, a shot of it coated with the self-etching primer just to kind of get a nice bite in the metal and again same thing all the way up here and then all the way up to the front and this side was a lot less uh, damaged than the other side was but we still took perfect care to make sure that everything in here isn't going to fall apart so that's uh that's pretty much it for an in-depth frame job now we just got to put this thing back together all right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I wanted to get a little bit more in depth with that just to kind of show you guys the full process. And I know I didn't show you actually any work, but it's hard for me to, again, film by myself. So what you saw there is everything from start to finish. So it came in, had a completely rotted frame, had holes in it. The right front frame was cracked and almost completely separated, which was a dangerous situation. But we are able to fix those things. We're utilizing all the materials from autorust.com or safety cap and guys none of these are sponsored by them but i trust in their products so much that i will only use their products when i'm repairing these jeeps so autorust.com link is in the description as always and uh yeah so it started with assessing the frame we knew we had to replace the rear section we had to replace the spring buckets we had to replace the center section and the front section and we had a crack so we started by cutting out the old spring buckets, making sure that we had enough frame material there to weld the new buckets in. We got those in. Then we proceeded to fix the crack in the frame and realign the frame so that we could actually put the safety caps in there and cut the rest of the frame without the front end falling off because it was pretty close to it. So we got that done, got that repaired. We did the passenger side first. We did a full weld out of that, got all of that stuff welded in and stiff and ready to go. And then we moved on to the driver's side we cut all of that out, we got the new piece in, full welded, and then we started with our treatment process, which is initially cleaning the metal. So I go over it with a wire brush or a flap disc or whatever, just to get all of the weld scale and all the weld spatter and everything else off of it. Then we clean over it with just a microfiber, and then we'll hit it again with a microfiber with either some acetone or some alcohol or something, just to kind of prepare the, the fresh metal to take paint. Then we hit it with a Rust-Oleum self-etching primer, which, secret, secret, you can actually weld through it. Um, I've welded through it many times without an issue, so even though it doesn't say weld through, you can still weld through it. We let that dry, we throw a coat of flat black paint on it because we don't want a gloss. And if you guys are doing this yourselves, if the rest of your frame is shot, don't go with gloss paint because then the repair will be so obvious because it's fresh metal, fresh paint, super glossy just looks ridiculous so shoot it with some flat black unless the rest of your frame is glossy and somebody's fixed it then glossy but flat black is my choice and then after all is said and done and everything is dry we're going to put the springs back in shocks back on rear end back in and buttoned up lower control arms upper control arms in the rear go back in then we're going to get the skid plate which the skid plate is actually pretty damaged too it's over there in the corner However, there is enough structural material there to hold it up. I'm going to advise our customer to get a new skid plate, which can be had pretty cheaply. Um, I think they're a couple hundred bucks online, so he's going to need to get another one of those. However, replacing it will be nice and easy because we've got all brand new bolts and brand new hardware and everything else. So the skid plates are going to come on and off like no problem. Um, this one, we've got to do a set of transmission lines. And then once all that's said and done, We'll put the exhaust back up, we'll weld that back in place from where we cut it, and then everything will be done. Put the skid plate back up, and we'll send it. So right now, all we're doing is it's Sunday, we just painted the frame, we're going to wait for that to dry for a couple hours, and then we're going to reassemble this Jeep, have it ready to go for Monday. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. A little bit longer of an explanation, but you know I think it deserved to be. And uh, yeah, so go down, check out Auto Rust, see what they got to offer. I'm sure they have something for your vehicle if the frame is rotted or even if some of the body panels are rotted. So check them out. Really, really enjoy their products and it's the only thing I use. So, all right, guys, 
You have yourselves a wonderful weekend, or what's left of it anyway. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It really helps out. Hit that like button. That also helps out huge. And uh, thanks for watching this one, guys. I appreciate it. Have a good afternoon. Oh, that's right. For those of you that may be watching this video that ordered some t-shirts, they are coming, I promise you. I know most of the YouTubers sell shirts and then whatever. Well, we had a deal. It fell through. Whatever. No excuses. I will get your shirts out to you very, very soon. There wasn't a whole lot of them ordered, but whatever was ordered will be going out very, very soon. So stay tuned for that, guys. Have a great day.